My talk is about mythic discourse in a digital world. This is, of course, a very large topic. And I will focus on, on the Icarus fall and transhumanism in the video game Deus Ex Human Revolution. Um, the aim of this presentation is to describe my process of contextualizing and understanding the interaction of cultural objects myths, story, narratives, and player agency in the video game of Deus Ex Human Revolution. The questions arose as part of my master's thesis and have since evolved into exploring the paradigm further. Myths and ideologies are often presented side by side in fiction, and perhaps even more commonly in science fiction. While we could just accept that these are uh, re-representations or recontextualizations of classical myths for the sake of allegorizing, or we could classify stories, fiction, and games as entertainment, I feel it to be superficial and unsatisfactory. To answer why entertainment is entertaining, there are several views. And in this presentation, I will focus on stories as spaces for discussing conceptual borders through image, imagination and play. Furthermore, I will view this process as participating in creating and upholding and re-evaluating cultural meanings, values, and their relations, rather than mere consumption of cultural objects as a way of escapism. Shortly on transhumanism. Transhumanism is an intellectual movement. Um, uh, it's mainly concerns guided evolution, genetic modification, and enhancement technology. And we are talking about humans. So guided evolution of humans and technological advancement of humans. Um, the term was originally coined by Julian Huxley in 1968 at the UNESCO meeting, where he talked about the possibilities of humans surviving the future. Uh, Julian Huxley is the brother of Aldous Huxley, who is famous for his dystopian novel as well. Um, nowadays, uh, transhumanism is mostly promoted and talked about by Professor Nick Bostrom at the Oxford University, who has uh, written uh, a lot of on transhumanism and works as a counselor for for. UNESCO and, and, other, and other organizations. There is also a World Transhumanist Association, which abbreviates itself as H+, which means the humanity plus. And um, there are many um, influential people in that movement. For example, Ray Kurzweil, who is uh, the head of the Google artificial intelligence uh, development and also Elon Musk with his Neuralink project that is fairly new. It's a brain interface that they are working on. Um, here you can see a picture taken from the game itself. Here's the H plus sign that is crossed over. So it's a critical view of, of transhumanism. Um, as this is a myth conference, I I can expect that everyone is familiar with the myth of Daedalus and Icarus, but um, shortly its first written account is by Ovid in Metamorphosis in year H AD. It's a myth that it's present in Greek, Roman and Etruscan folklore and is often interpreted as a metaphor for human hubris and its dangers. Um, one interesting point is to make that this myth where Icarus gets his wings, it's not done by magic. It's actually done by engineering and technology, which I think is interesting. Uh, it's also one of the most depicted motifs in art. And then we can assess if the symbolics of um, winged falling creatures from the sky in a Semitic context means the fall and about pride, it's, further emphasizes the uh, dangers of hubris and pride. Uh, shortly on myth here, uh, I 
have several sources, but William Doty's mythography from year 2000 is one of the main sources for my interpretations here. So myths are uh, stories and motifs about happenings and they, and in, they create a view of the order of the world and the order of things. Uh, mythograph myth mythologies, again, uh, describe whole cosmologies and ontologies and systems of meaning and values. Um, there are very, many ways that this same um, plane or form of discussion is represented. It's called metaculture as, or it could uh, be referred to Plato's world of ideas and Karl Popper's third world or Jung's collective unconscious. What I mean here that this is a plane or uh, an environment where uh, difficult philosophical topics can be discussed through using metaphors. Uh, myths are re-represented and re-enacted, also re-contextualized. And when this is done, it uh, enforces and reevaluates or reinforces or reevaluates their meanings. And this makes them living culture instead of just um, uh, static objects or, or merely logos, that they are living, living things that change shape. And this is very similar to the cultural heritage process for, for, um, for culture. Um, for one way to see is also that they make a set of tools of discourse, something that I now have called folk psychology um, it would be somehow related to what we call folk religions or folk beliefs. Uh, and we have folk psychology, which it's more nastily called kitchen psychology. The idea here is, is that people who are not in an academic environment have tools to discuss complex ideas and complex um, uh, relations of things. From the game, Deus Ex Human Revolution is created by, or not created by, published by Eidos Montreal. It's a cyberpunk dystopia. And uh, cyberpunk particularly uh, addresses issues of the mind-body problem and, and the philosophy of, of, for Descartes, for example, uh, most common or best known examples are maybe Blade Runner or Ghost in the Shell. Uh, the story is built about the darker aspects of transhumanism. Um, and uh, in this case, it's more of an, maybe not a dystopia, but it's, it's a cautionary utopia where a utopia for some becomes a dystopia for others. And uh, the story of the protagonist is loosely based on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It's very rich in transhumanist, iman, transhuman, or transhumanist imagery. And the game itself is what's called a first person shooter or first person sneaker in this case. It's played through Adam's eyes. And while you can play the game quickly without with shooting everything in sight, if you play it uh, more like more of stealth and through discussions and dialogues, you get much more content out of the game. Um, Adam is a security officer in a, in a corporation that creates human enhancement and prosthesis. And um, he dies in the very beginning of the game. And what happens is that the corporation and his boss brings him back to life using the technologies that they create. Uh, Sarif, the chief of the, of the corporation, sends Adam to recover a missing, a missing scientist. And this is uh, actually a very classic. Um, King sends his knight to recover the princess. Um, I view this also as a modern fairy tale um, with player agency and uh, branching narrative and multiple endings. So the player agency changes the story and changes how you view 
uh, Adam's story and the story of the game world. The interesting thing here is that they have used myths and classical paintings to uh, frame the story, which changes very much on how you view it. Uh, here is an example in one space uh, where you can find the, the Lament of Icarus by Herbert James Draper on a wall. These can be easily missed, but if you have, the, have a keen eye, you can find these clues throughout the game. Here's another. Here's the Fall of Icarus by Jakob Peter Gowie with the same theme. And, and a connection to, to modern mythologies, let's say, say more like medicine and how the human body has been viewed since the Enlightenment. Here's the anatomy lesson of Dr. Nicholas Stulp by Rembrandt. Uh, this is a, a marker because at these times, the human body was began to be seen as some kind of a machine that can be fixed or enhanced. And there's a, has, there's a big conceptual change here from uh, previous times. Um, here is also um, from the game. Um, this is an advertisement for, a, for an opera in the game called Il Metamorfoso. This could also be uh, just a um, reference to, to the change of Adam or the change of humanity and society through these technologies. But in this context, I, I'm fairly sure that it also refers to, to Ovid's literary work. Some concluding remarks. Um, we have re-representations of classic, classic myths, and that's obvious in the game. And uh, how I view them that this is a cultural heritage process. There are myths used to discuss ideas and also discussing the content of the myths and their interpretations themselves. Um, they arise from a conceptual dissonance, from discomfort, from, from having uh, conflicts in worldviews. And this is kind of a discourse that's that addresses topics as what is sacred and what is profane and the relations of nature and culture, society and technology, and also purity and danger. Danger is very much present. I view this as mythical discourse. If, if we accept that this is an active participation in culture, then we, if we discuss topics about the mythological using myths as metaphors, it would, um, would amount to what would be called mythic discourse. Um, here I use the term vernacular philosophy, but I have been advised to, uh, to avoid that since it has very, very broad uh, meanings. But let's say folk, folk philosophy, that means that people can who are not in an academic or institutional environment can dif discuss difficult questions dis uh, through metaphors and fiction. Then is the point of the rules of play. As we can only say, we can say that it's only a game, it's only a play, or it's only a story, and that's one key of being able to discuss topics that might be difficult in a mundane environment. So. The environment of a game gives a very good um, forum or place to discuss imaginary topics and what if environments. And this is something that is very common practice in, in philosophy. Um, the aim here is to create a framework for understanding how representations of myths interact with contemporary topics in games and science fiction. Uh, here on the right side, I have a screenshot of the magazine Nature talking about the Anthropocene. And Nature is, of course, a very esteemed scientific magazine. But if we look at the imagery here, it's sort of a different story. And here is the, is the battle of, uh, of nature and human culture side by side and depicted inside the human body. And I think this is 
an interesting remark to see how this same uh, mythological or mythic discourse happens in in our real lives and the presentations in it. So to conclude, um, just a second. Uh, the process of modernization in our environment or our culture or even in ourselves causes a conflict of values and a dissonance in our conceptual world. From this conflict rises a discomfort in our worldviews, our ontologies, and a need arises to discuss, understand, and re-evaluate meanings and their relations. This discussion is carried out through metaphors in fictions and play, and myths deliver meanings and even more, they deliver questions to frame a complex topic, which the player can explore through one's own actions and choices. So we could even call these philosophy simulators. Thank you. That was all for me today. Um, this is an part of a two hour long presentation that I've cut out from it and if you have any questions or want a proper um, literature list, please don't hesitate to contact. Or if you have ideas or just want to point me in the right direction, then I would be very grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much, John Jacob Lindstrom for your first talk in this meetings on myth criticism here in Madrid, well, in, in Helsinki you are, mm. uh, about transhumanisms always dealing about or with relationship between mind and body. <laughs> is it, this is the main topic of uh, transhumanism. And now let's see if there are questions for you. Can you read them? I see. Yes, yes please go. Um, the first one is by Metka. Metka. Basically, the interaction between the artificial intelligence going crazy and the humans. Um, it's, yes, possibly. The, the question of artificial in intelligence is also very prominent in, in cyberpunk, and artificial intelligence gets uh, a role of. Uh, of spirits from old mythology. And it's a good question if they are modern myths or, or re-representations of, of much older myths. Ah, okay, it was meant for Leon Brunettis, but I, I joined the discussion. Um, further questions? No? Well, let me know if this made sense and <laughs> if you want to direct me in, in some direction in this future, future research.